Tasmanian tiger's brains yield clues long after extinction. The tale of the Tasmanian tiger was tragic. Once numerous across Tasmania, the dog-like marsupial was branded a sheep killer by colonists in the 1830s and hunted to extinction. The last of its kind, Benjamin, died in a zoo in 1936 and with it many secrets into the animal's lives were lost. The striped creature, which is also known as the thylacine, was hardly studied when it was alive, depriving scientists of understanding the behavior of an important predator from Australia's recent biological past. Now, for the first time, researchers have performed neural scans on the extinct carnivore's brain, revealing insights that had been lost since the species went extinct. Part of the myth about them is what exactly did they eat, how did they hunt and were they social, said Dr. Gregory Burns, a neuroscientist at Emory University and lead author on the study, which was published Wednesday in the journal PLOS One. These are questions nobody really knows the answers to. Dr. Burns's main research pertains to dogs and the inner workings of the canine brain, but after learning more about Tasmanian tigers, he became fascinated by the beasts. With their slender bodies, long snouts and sharp teeth, Tasmanian tigers looked as if they could be related to dogs, wolves or coyotes. But actually they are separated by more than 150 million years of evolution. It is a classic example of convergent evolution, in which two organisms that are not closely related develop similar features because of the environment they adapted to and the ecological role they played. To better understand thylacines, Dr. Burns spent two years tracking down two preserved Tasmanian tiger brains, one at the Smithsonian Institution and the other at the Australian Museum. Their brains, like those of all marsupials, are very different from the brains of placental mammals. The biggest difference is that they lack a corpus callosum, which is the part of the brain that connects the left and right hemispheres. Because of the differences, Dr. Burns said, if he wanted to make any sense out of the Tasmanian tiger brain, he could not compare it with one of his dog brain scans. Instead, he needed to analyze it against something much more similar. That's where the devil comes into the picture, Dr. Burns said. The Tasmanian devil, a carnivorous marsupial that mostly scavenges for food, is one of the Tasmanian tiger's closest living relatives, Dr. Burns collected two Tasmanian devil brains, scanned them and compared them with the two Tasmanian tiger brains. For the brain scans, he used magnetic resonance imaging to study the gray matter, and diffusion tensor imaging to study the white matter. From the scans Dr. Burns found that Tasmanian tigers had a larger brain, particularly the frontal lobes. The differences suggested that Tasmanian tigers were smarter than Tasmanian devils and used their cortex more for planning and decision-making, Dr. Burns said. That, he said, further supported the idea that Tasmanian tigers were avid hunters, rather than scavengers like Tasmanian devils. Leah Krubitzer, a neuroscientist from the University of California, Davis, who was not involved in the study, called the work a heroic effort for scanning brains of the extinct animal. The authors cleverly used the best available techniques to examine brain organization in non-living brains that were in not very good condition, she said. And Dr. Burns said his research could change our understanding of these extinct Australian predators. Go back 100 years, people dismissed thylacines as stupid animals because they weren't fast moving, he said. He added that what he could see of the Tasmanian tiger's brains revealed that they were probably quite intelligent. Facts about Tasmanian tigers. The Tasmanian tiger, also called Tasmanian wolf and thylacine, was neither a tiger nor a wolf, but a marsupial, and closely related to the Tasmanian devil. The last known Tasmanian tiger died in 1936, but hundreds of unconfirmed sightings have spurred investigations into whether the animal still lives. Size. Extinction marked the demise of the only member of its family. Thylacinid, and the world's largest marsupial, pouched, carnivore. 
Tasmanian tigers were 39 to 51 inches, 100 to 130 centimeters long, and the tail added 20 to 26 inches, 50 to 65 cm to its length. They weigh 33 to 66 lbs, 15 to 30 kilograms, according to Encyclopedia Britannica. Tasmanian tigers looked like dogs with yellowish fur. They had black stripes across the body and a thin, almost rodent-like tail. Habitat. Fossil evidence suggests that the modern thylacine, Thylacinus cynocephalus, whose name means dog-headed pouched one, emerged about 4 million years ago. Once widespread across Australia, the animal disappeared everywhere except Tasmania about 2,000 years ago, according to the National Museum of Australia, MA. The disappearance was likely due to competition with dingoes. Modern people discovered the animal in Tasmania, thus its name. Habits While it had a vicious appearance, Tasmanian tigers were actually very timid and could be captured without a fight. They would often die suddenly, perhaps from going into shock, according to the Australian government. Researchers think that Tasmanian tigers located prey by scent and hunted, for the most part, at night. They would hunt alone or with a partner. They were mostly quiet creatures, but when hunting, they would make a yapping noise, much like a small dog, according to the Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Service. Diet. Tasmanian tigers were meat eaters. They hunted kangaroos, sheep and wallabies, reportedly, though there is little research into the eating habits of these animals. These animals could open their mouths almost 90 degrees, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. However, a study in the August 2011 Journal of Zoology found that the Tasmanian tiger wouldn't have been able to kill large prey because of its weak jaw. The authors thought that the animal would have hunted for small marsupials like wallabies and possums. Like other marsupials, Tasmanian tigers had pouches. Their pouches opening faced their hind legs, though. In her pouch, a female could carry two to four hairless babies at once. As the babies grew, the pouch expanded to accommodate them. After the babies became older, the mother would leave the young in a lair, such as a cave or hollowed log, to go hunting. Thylacines likely lived five to seven years in the wild, though they lived up to nine years in captivity. Classification Taxonomy here is the taxonomy information for the Tasmanian tiger, according to the Integrated Taxonomic Information System, Itis, Kingdom, Animalia Subkingdom, Bilateria Infra Kingdom, Pterostomia Phylum, Chordata Subphylum, Vertebrata Infra Phylum, Nathostomata Superclass, Tetrapoda Class, Mammalia Subclass, Theria Infra Class, Metatheria Order, Dasyuromorphia Family, Thylacina genus, Thylacinus species, Thylacinus cynocephalus, extinct or not, it is estimated there were around 5,000 thylacines in Tasmania when Europeans settled in the area, according to National Museum Australia. In 1830, the Van Diemen's Land Co. introduced bounty on the animal, and in 1888 the Tasmanian Parliament placed a bounty of one pound, 1.25, on thylacines, according to the Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Service. The last wild Tasmanian tiger was killed between 1910 and 1920. In 1936, the last known thylacine, named Benjamin, died in captivity in the Bmris Zoo in Hobart, Australia. This was just two months after the Australian government made the animal a protected species. The International Union for Conservation of Nature lists Tasmanian tigers as extinct. However, there have been hundreds of sighting of the Tasmanian tiger over the last 100 years or so. In fact, some of the latest sightings have spurred an investigation into their current existence. Once the largest carnivorous marsupial in Australia and Tasmania, the Tasmanian tiger went the way of the dodo in 1936. Environmental pressure and hunting killed off Tasmanian tigers, also known as thylacines. The last died in a zoo in 1936, only months after the Tasmanian government extended protection to the species. Image credit. Smithsonian Institution Archives 1906. Public domain.
Other facts A research team at the Australian Museum launched the thylacine cloning project in 1999 to attempt to clone a Tasmanian tiger. The research team obtained tissue samples from a female thylacine that had been preserved in alcohol for over 100 years. They were able to extract DNA, and by 2002, they had replicated individual genes. However, in 2005, researchers determined that the quality of the DNA was too poor to work with and the project was scrapped. Thylacine Thylacinus cynocephalus, also called marsupial wolf, Tasmanian tiger, or Tasmanian wolf, largest carnivorous marsupial of recent times, presumed extinct soon after the last captive individual died in 1936. A slender fox-faced animal that hunted at night for wallabies and birds, the thylacine was 100 to 130 cm. 39 to 193 inches long, including its 50 to 65 cm, 20 to 26 inch tail. Its weight ranged from 15 to 30 kg, 33 to 66 pounds, but about 25 kg, about 55 pounds, was average. The fur was yellowish brown, with 13 to 19 dark bars on the back and rump. The hind legs were longer than the forelegs, and the tail was very thick at the base, tapering evenly to a point. The skull was remarkably similar to that of a dog but had characteristics diagnostic of a marsupial. Other differences include a smaller brain case and jaws with an enormous, almost 90-degree gape. In a shallow pouch that opened rearward, the female carried two to four young at a time. The thylacine had been found on the Australian mainland and New Guinea and was confined to Tasmania only in historic times. Competition